Hey kids, it's Mr. Fry here, hope you will. And uh, out and about today on another bike review, and this is a bike that uh, has intrigued me ever since it was first announced by Triumph. This is the uh, Speed Triple 1200RR, a sort of Neo Cafe racer type bike. You see the same sort of mould as the uh, BMW R9 T Racer or the MV Augusta Super Veloce. They've basically taken the uh, underpinnings of the Speed Triple, which is an excellent bike anyway, put a retro style fairing on the front, some fancy Olin's electronic suspension, and made it this sort of retro racing bike. Anyway, if you're interested in what I think of the machine, stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you. All right, so before we get into the riding on this uh, beast, let's take a close look at this thing because uh, undeniably this bike is striking looking. And I have to say, when I first saw pictures of this bike, I didn't know whether I liked it or not. But now I've seen it up close, I've decided I absolutely love it. Let's check it out. Okay, first thing uh, to look at, of course, is this fairing. Uh, unusual design on here. This headlight, I really like it actually. The uh, Speed Triple often gets criticized because of those uh, um, like waspy headlights it has. Well, now you've got a choice because you can have this one if you like, and it looks really, really nice. And then the other thing you start to notice as you look closer at the Speed Triple RR is just everywhere it just oozes quality so to start with check out the carbon fiber mud guard on the front and then you realize there's lots of bits of carbon trim like underneath here the radiator shrouds are in carbon you've got the lovely olin's forks of course and the brembo brakes um, uh, if we come down here underneath the tank we've got yet more carbon lovely coach line painted on the tank uh, i'm not actually that keen on this white one i prefer the red but uh, but it's it's definitely a lovely quality item the seat's beautifully made when we come to the top here uh, you know the cockpit the sink the stuff you're looking at this is a, a nice bit of uh, engineering here and the only thing I don't like about this actually is this plastic shroud here hiding some of the wiring for the uh, clever electronic suspension gubbins but other than that uh, it looks pretty good although they do persist with one of these um, sample type uh, uh, brake reservoirs which uh, I don't like but again talk about the brakes we've got the Brembo master cylinder as well and some nice adjustable span levers everything on this thing just oozes quality the rear Olins as well uh, coming to the back end I love the tail light what they've done with that what I don't like is this monstrosity here definitely needs a tail tidy but even say having said that this monstrosity itself is actually a reasonable design look with metal and stuff you don't often see that and again we've got the coach lines duplicated here yeah it's a, a beautiful beautiful bike and it absolutely oozes quality so uh, yeah thumbs up as far as that's concerned definitely like the looks of this thing let's uh, get back on and uh, ride her see how she goes so when I first saw pictures of this bike what I was worried about when I saw it was well number one I thought that looks interesting looks different it's quite brave of uh, trying to come out with a bike that looks like this but what I thought is I hope they haven't taken a brilliant naked bike in the speed triple taken away the thing that uh, makes naked so appealing i.e. comfort and made a sports bike that isn't a particularly good sports bike you know kind of in between the two so that's what I intend to find out on this first ride review the first thing I would say about the bike when you first jump on it and ride it is it's not as uncomfortable as it looks do you remember that uh, BMW R9 T racer it is an amazing looking bike absolutely love the looks of that thing I rode that a few years back but my goodness me it was purgatory to ride the riding position was really extremely laid right across the top of it well this isn't like that I'm glad to say so that's one fear dispelled because I thought this might go the same way BMW kind of quietly dropped that bike I guess it just didn't sell very well I'm intrigued to see how this is going to sell and what sort of person would buy this right down my little favorite twisty bit here and already I can say that the suspension on here is beautiful those Olin's electronic units do make an awful lot of difference to the plushness of the bike also the fact that your weight is a little bit more further forward needs a hand and just feels sharper to me than its naked sibling which I rode last year but yeah that suspension really does make a difference anyway let's cover off the uh, practical items as I usually do in my reviews starting off then with comfort So you are tucked down in a sort of a racing tuck if you want to be. It feels like a physically quite large bike, so you can tuck down if you want to. What oh, goodness me, she goes all right. Let's just slow down a bit. The handlebars are clip-ons, but they're not too extreme at all. Just make for a very nice ride, I have to say. 
your legs though are tucked up in quite an extreme position. My knees are at quite a tight angle here. It's not uncomfortable, but the you know the rear sets are quite rear set. As you'd expect on a sporty bike. The fairing does a nice job of keeping the wind off you. I'm in clean air as I rattle through the twisters here. And yeah, actually, as a as sports bikes go, it's a comfortable place to be. It's much closer to GSXR than Panigale. Put it that way. In fact, if you want to, you can slide forward and you can sit pretty much upright. Look at that. And that's, a, that's comfortable. You could ride along like that. And that's not uncomfortable at all. But actually, on the comfort stakes, I don't think... You need to have too many fears there. Mirrors on here work nice. They're nice and large. Nice design to them as well. They seem a long way away, which I quite like. Good view behind, no vibrations. And it being a triple, of course, it is a nice smooth motor. There are a few high frequency vibes through the seat, but they're not, uh, not the sort that are going to get on your nerves. They're just enough to let you realise that you're on a motorbike but they're not annoying uh, vibrations by any means. Let me just test these brakes on here. Oh wow, the brakes, just amazing. That front brake, it's got the Brembo star levers on here and they are incredible, let's just try that again. Yeah, nice and progressive as well. Let me just try the rear, nothing behind. Yeah, the rear's really good as well. Brakes are awesome on here. I mean, this really is a top quality bike. It's fitted with top quality cycle parts and uh, it really does show. It's a, it's a nice thing to ride. Gearbox on here, up and down quick shifter is standard. Nice and smooth as Triumph gearboxes are these days. Let me just try the clutch out of interest. Yeah, it's not too heavy, that's alright. You ain't going to have to use it very much if you don't want to. The clutch is alright. What does strike me about this though is this handling. It's, it's beautiful. Now I'll let you into a secret, I, it's not really a secret, but I didn't think I was going to like this bike very much. I thought they would have, uh, would have spoiled a good naked. But actually, it's a really nice ride and it's not, it's not that uncomfortable. I've got really painful shoulders, and on here, they're not painful. I could ride this for hours on end. Switch gear on here, typical Triumph. Uh, everything's, you know, the little joystick we've seen before. It's got the same TFT as we saw on the uh, Speed Triple something I've been critical about in the past on trance are the TFTs but this one is one of their better ones I have to say it's actually pretty intuitive to use I've got a manual for this bike but I've worked out how you change the suspension settings and and everything else on it so it's quite intuitive to use I'm not a big fan of the joystick I'd rather it is actual buttons but uh, but it does work and it's uh, it is a nice clear TFT I love what they've done with the dial and the way it uh, sort of lights up with flames when you change the settings. If I hit the home button, look, the little dial goes through. Oh, actually, I'm not showing you the flames now. Let's do it, I uh, know. Oh Let's go that way. There we go, see the flames lighting up the dial there? I love that. I think it's brilliant. Wow, the cornering is just brilliant. The engine note is quite different to what I expected. I'm a big uh, triple fan. And this has got, I don't know what they've done to the exhaust on this, but it's got a sort of a low whine about it that I've not heard on other triples from Trump. A bit less of that induction whine, and a sort of a lower, more purposeful perhaps rumble. It's a nice sound out of the standard exhaust on this. Right, what about what it's like to ride in a minute? Let's uh, jump off and I'll talk you through the numbers, the specifications on this bike. All right, to the numbers then. You've got to talk specs if you can do a review of the bike, aren't you? So we'll rattle through these quickly because, let's face it, numbers aren't that exciting, are they? All right, let's start off then with the engine on this bike, which is the masterpiece. Uh, Triumph are the experts at the Triple, aren't they? And this one is an 1160cc uh, unit, exactly the same, of course, as the one in the standard speed Triple. Puts out a whopping 178 brake horsepower and 125 newton metres of torque. So no lack of power there. Uh, if we come to the front of the bike, you can see we've got these Brembo style lemurs on here, the calipers, amazing brakes on here, and matched with amazing suspension as well this is the Olin's uh, uh, electronic suspension we can see the stepper motor connections uh, on the top there really really plush ride on here uh, beautiful suspension and brakes on here 
Uh, seat height, oh let's have a look at the rear suspension, there's the uh, electronic suspension at the back as well of course, also from Olinx. Seat height on here, uh, it sounds quite high, 830mm, but actually it's very narrow waisted this bike, so I can get my feet pretty much flat on the deck, even though I'm only 5 foot 8, so no worries there. Uh, the bike itself is 199kg uh, wet, which shocks me, it's pretty light, I mean it feels like a big bike when you're on it, as sports bikes go certainly, uh, but actually it feels very very light, much lighter than it looks, so no problems on the weight. Tank capacity, 15.5 litres, so, uh, you know, about norm. Electronics on this, uh, well, it's got a TFT screen, uh, which we've seen already, and it's got loads of electronics. If you want more detail on that, check out my Speed Triple uh, review. It's the same as that, although, of course, this has got the addition of the electronic suspension. Um, so go and check out that review if you want to know more about the electronics, but needless to say, it's got absolutely everything. Price-wise, according to the Triumph website, this is £17,950, so it is an expensive bike. I've said that it's a premium machine loads of times in this review, uh, but it comes at a premium price so you know to put it into perspective that's more expensive than a BMW S1000RR although that bike can quickly spec up and get more expensive it's more expensive than things like a KTM Super Duke R so that kind of puts it into perspective doesn't it uh, this bike but it is a lovely lovely thing both to look at and to ride okay welcome back aboard the mighty speed triple 1200RR really enjoying this first ride out on the bike but it's making me wonder who would actually buy this bike then because it is quite expensive as I, as I mentioned and if you want a naked sports bike then this probably isn't it is it you've got a lot of choice in the naked world these days Super Duke R's and uh, of course the Speed Triple itself it's an excellent bike and my favourite the uh, Ducati Street Fighter V4 And other than the uh, Ducati Street Fighter, I think they're all cheaper than this. So I think if you're in the naked market, you'd possibly go for one of those. If you're in the sports bike market, then uh, the current leader, as far as I'm concerned, is the BMW S1000RR. That in its basic form comes in cheaper than this. And again, is a special, special bike. I think if I want a sports bike, I would have that over this. So I guess it puts it sort of in its own category, the same sort of customers as would buy the Super Veloce or the BMW R9T Racer, which sadly turned out to not be many, that's why they dropped that bike. So I do hope this has a lifespan ahead of it. And it does get bought. It's kind of either one thing or the other. And although there's nothing on this first ride that I can find that I don't like about the bike, I think that may be its downfall. Anyway, I've got this bike for the next uh, couple of weeks. I'm going to ride it as much as I can. And uh, hopefully I'll bring you some more videos on this machine. So if you're interested in the Speed Triple 1200RR, stick around, stay tuned to the channel. And I'll uh, bring you some more videos in the future. If you've not done so already, do consider hitting that subscribe button. It'll be great to see you on the next video. Until then, this is Speed. The Mist of Fly, cheerio. Of course, one of the issues with a bike like this that doesn't particularly fit into any uh, category is what the heck do you wear? So I've kind of gone retro with this one. I'm wearing my uh, Segura retro jacket. This is the one that comes with the included uh, lumberjack style shirt, so dead hipster, good stuff. I've got my PMJ jeans and my Falco boots, uh, and that seems to work as a bit of an ensemble with this bike. If you're interested in any of the kit that I'm wearing, then uh, check out bikeheads.co.uk for your local stockists. I'll put links below to them and also links to Sports Bike Shop where you can buy these as well if you want to buy them off the web. Alrighty, that's it for this time. Speak to you again soon.